So it's time to go to the next Black Ops. This might actually be the most interesting one because it has a different skill requirement setup than the other Black Ops ships. And it might very well be one of the more difficult ships to actually skill into because the skills that you have to have for this ship are kind of not really available directly uh, to be purchased from the skill menu, but you have to have the chips, and the chips are by no means cheap. Last time I checked, those chips were quite expensive, so the Scorpion Special Ops, or the Widow, is at the moment probably one of the weirdest and most difficult Black Ops ships to skill into, but I do like this ship for several reasons that I am going to be covering today, and of course I'll be having a little bit of, you know, a little bit of fun with this thing since I like to test out new ships. That's honestly one of my favorite things to do over here. So, let's take a look at the tele description. Now, the roll bonus is going to be about the same as we have seen on the previous on the previous Black Ops ships. Some decent stats for extenders, armor plates, and of course some other uh, attributes that are going to be very important for its role. It has to be buffed though, that's for sure. All of them have to be buffed, that's one thing that needs to happen. Now, advanced missile bombardment bonus and advanced gunnery bonus. Now, you will have to have one of these two skills if you want to utilize the DPS bonus. And let me just quickly show you where the skills are located. Now, they are new skills that have been released quite recently. And this is the only Black Ops that has the advanced skill requirements. The other Black Ops ships have expert skill requirements, and which is easier to skill into, the classic expert skills or the advanced skills for this ship? That's a good question, uh, because it takes longer to skill into the, uh, into the expert skills, but the advanced skills cost a lot more. So yeah, it is kind of a very a weird situation here. And there are also some other things that I want to mention that has been uh, pointed out. Now, Advanced Missile Bombardment will give you plus 15% Missile Torpedo Damage, minus 5% Missile Torpedo Activation Time, and a plus 5% Scan Resolution. Now, a lot of players have mentioned that that Scan Resolution bonus is kind of uh, misplaced, and we also have something similar with the, with the Advanced Scannery, which will give you a bonus on 50, uh, plus 15% bonus on turret damage, some activation time, and you also uh, get a plus five percent set of strength. So the the third attribute here, the skin illusion and the set of strength, has probably been misplaced. Now you have some expert requirements: expert electronic warfare bonus plus ten percent on the guidance jammer strength and optimum range, and plus eighty five percent on the disruptor jammer strength. Expert battleship command bonus. Plus 2% flight velocity, minus 2% inertia modifier, and plus 0.2 light year maximum jump range. So, a very interesting ship, skill wise. Now, the Widow has two drones, five fire slots, five minion slots, five low slots, three combat, and three engineering rigs. This thing is, of course, a shield tank, don't armor tank. The Scorpion Special Ops, or Black Ops, or Widow. It had like three different names. I'll just call it the Widow because it's the shortest and the most easy, the easiest to pronounce. Decent capacitor, decent recharge time. No, of course, a decent recharge rate per second. Now, overall, the the stats here are comparable to the other Black Ops ships. It shouldn't be too fast. Again, the Panther, the Typhoon Special Ops, is definitely the fastest. Although the Typhoon also isn't as tanky as some of the other Black Ops ships. Now on to the build. So this this thing has a bonus on all the turrets and has bonus on missiles. The only thing that this ship doesn't have a bonus on are drones. So I have slapped some large blasters, although you can technically create a bait, a bait widow and use small, medium and even the composers, if you like, although I'm not really sure if the composers would actually be a better option than some of the other medium weapons, but you can you have bonus on all weapon systems. Small, large, and medium, and technically technically capital, since it doesn't really specify the limit. So technically it should also have a bonus on capital, but you can you can't really fit that, so that's kinda funny. 
And today I'll be showing you the DPS with the blasters, I think with missiles and with the auto cannon. So it doesn't matter what weapons you have, it should be compatible with this thing. Now in the menu slots I have one, this is a covered sign also feature, there. this is the new sign -off. Although you can use the covered sign -off, you can also use the normal sign -off. you can also use both at the same time, I think you can technically fit, actually simultaneous modules 1, you, you can fit. Uh, only one sign can be fitted. Okay, that's a uh, good round. It has five medium slots, which means that the Scorpion has the potential to be a very good sign of bait ship. Basically, you can scramble something, tackle something, be tanky, and open up sign for the rest of the crew to jump in. And this is kind of the idea behind this build dual large extender sand. We have some. Nice. Now this uh, having some nice tricks, but this thing is built for maximum resistance, and I added some shield volume as well. Here you can take a look at the um, integrations. The engineering rigs can also be changed. This is just uh, something that I think is kind of universal. 530,000 hit points, 163,000 shield hit points. Honestly, that's a lot of shield. As for the nanocore. You have a lot of final cores to choose from. If you already have some old cores, then you can use them. The older nano cores are compatible with the with the new Black Ops ships. So if you have older cores, you can use them. Will not be a problem. I'll be using the ship without a core because I like how the I like how the default skin of the ship looks. And Usually, Undone. when I use a core, it's for something else, but when I'm testing out the ship for the first time, usually I just roll without a core because, I, again, a raw stock performance of the ship with only skills and modules active. Now, for scrummers, that's 16 points. This thing can be a fantastic tackle. It also has some decent tank, almost a million hit points, so it's not going to get torn to shreds in 5 seconds. If you decide to tackle something with high DPS, it should have a lot of time for the sign to be lit and for the ships to for other ships to basically come in. 2.8 million hit points with the damage control active. Now they don't have a bonus of damage control, only 13 seconds activation, but that should be more than enough for capitals, super capitals and other ships to just jumping through the Sino. Technically you can have 5 scrummers, that would be kind of hilarious. 5 scrummers, that's 20 points. I'm not really sure if you ever... Actually, you in some cases you actually need to have 20 points. But exit. the Widow has the potential to be the best Sino bait ship, the best Sino bait Black Ops, at least at the moment, since it has tank and it has a lot of points to hold the target. Although, to be honest, not many capitals have stabs, so it's not a big problem, or not that it, not that difficult to to tackle a a capital with most ships. But you know, for future proofing, because we might we may see some nasty stabs on capitals soon. This thing has that covered without much of a problem. Now the other build that you can also do with more resistance is triple adaptives and a damage control. The damage control is very useful, very important as well, since that module is going to keep the ship from being torn to shreds. If it gets shot by a bunch of high DPS ships in a camp or any other situation where it might get thrown at. Overall, uh, the Black Ops ships offer some interesting tank. Not as tanky as navies, of course, but they can be tanky and they can also open up nasty signals that can just drop a bunch of super capitals, capitals and other ships on your face. So that the fact alone that it can do that makes them definitely a priority target and ships that should be feared because you never know what what they can do. So uh, with this build I have a little bit less shield volume but surprisingly have more overall hit points in the end. 1 million hit points, 84, 88, 90, and 84, but 143,000 shield hit points. Oh, this is still some really nice shield, shield volume. The fantastic bonus on 
Xenus and armor plates is definitely quite welcomed, and these ships are meant to be used as a passive tank in most cases. And with two damage roll active, 3 million hit points, 94, 96, 97, and 95% resistance. Pretty good. Pretty good. And that's definitely not going to get yeeted in 5 seconds, so kind of set up for the roll quite well. I think the most difficult Black Ops to set up for this roll is definitely the Typhoon, because it has much less tank, but the Typhoon has some other traits that this ship doesn't. So, what can I do next? Well, this is a Black Ops. You can fit a clocking device and... It, I mean, the clocking device can be useful for various different per various different situations, basically. If you camp for someone in a mission or similar, you can just cloak in their mission and wait for them to warp and then uh, you decloak and basically tackle them. And this is where the lack of speed is apparent, because if you're cloaked at the mo at least at as of, time of, as of me recording this video, uh, the ships don't have a velocity bonus while being clocked, so you really have to uh, nail the warping correctly so that you wait for the target at the right position, because if you don't do that, you can't really burn to them that quickly, cloaked. So they definitely need more speed uh, while they have the cloaking device active. And this ship has five low slots, which means that you will have to sacrifice a bit of tank in order to fit a cloaking device which not that bad when you think about but it means you have to compensate the missing low slot with rigs because if you remove a tank module you directly impact the overall tank in the end which isn't again a big problem they're already quite tanky but it's still a missing uh, low slot if you want to have a propulsion module, it's going to impact the tank even more. And this is basically the problem with ships that have less than six low slots. You can't really have both tank and other utility modules like cloak I'm and talking. something similar. And this is the drawback on the on the widow. It doesn't have a extra six low slot, so you will have to make compromises in tank or speed or maneuverability or cloak if you want to have a specific purpose for it. That's the single most largest drawback on this ship. The other Black Ops ships with 6 low slots don't suffer from this problem, because they have 6 slots and they can you can easily balance things out. Although still with this problem, or problem with this drawback, it still has over 700 million hit points. It is going 1.1 km per second, which is okay, I guess. It can jump 5 light tiers, pretty decent, not uh, not too bad, so overall it still can fulfill its purpose even when you compromise the tank a little bit for speed and for the cloak. 44 meters per second, yeah that is excruciating slow for the Black Ops, that's... If I have any complaints about Black Ops ships at the moment, it's the fact that they're too slow while being cloaked. I think that's my single most complaint about these ships, and it's also the single most thing that the players have complained about. A valid, a valid complaint, because they need to be fast or be wobbly clock. Doesn't have to be like 50 km per second speed. Uh, it should be okay if it can go about, I don't know, 600, 700 meters per second. Exactly. I think that should be decent enough for, for these ships. It should be fast enough to be useful, but not too fast to be broken. That's somewhat of a sweet spot, I'd say, but again, Feel free to let me know what you think about that in the comments. What would be the ideal speed while being clocked for Black Ops? That's the question that I have. Now, um, let's see what I can do more with this thing. I mean, there's just so much you can do with uh, 5 minimum slots. I love the fact it has 5 minimum slots, like the Balgorn. You can do a lot of things with it. Uh, and nowadays, with million stabs and stuff like that, having a lot of minimum slots is always welcome. So. This ship definitely kind of piquing my interest because of the extra slots, but at the same time, I don't really like the the skill requirements for it because I don't feel like spending 10 billion ESCON chips just to get the advanced gunnery skill or the advanced metal skills. Anyway, uh, can you fit the ship in the same way I use some of my other PvP ships? Yeah, you can. Uh, with in, in this case, I have blasters, so I will slap a damage control and a large shield extend or a generator, although generators are definitely kind of 
the better option for these ships since uh, Dory has a fantastic bonus on extenders and the bonus does affect the generators as well, they're kind of extenders uh, too, so the generators already give a lot more shield volume by default, so combining that with the ship's bonus it will give you a bit more overall shield per module than the classic extenders. And you also have the general units which enhance the shield extender shield volume even more, so the, the, the new modules are definitely the and the way to go for these. I know they're expensive, but one day when they become more affordable, when there is a lot more players in Cold Edge, when we have more Cold Edge systems, when there isn't a small section of these systems in the game, when you know we can go there without having a uh, next upper upper rear every five seconds, <laughs> it would definitely be a less expensive and a more commonly available module. But until it happens, I guess the normal extenders will also do the work just fine. Now, uh, I know my modules here are all, all over the place. I tried to make uh, um, less of a mess in my hangar here, but it crashes the game when I try to stack them. So, yeah, I just need to destroy the modules. I, have to, I really have to destroy all the modules and start to uh, spawn them again to have some form of... Um, Less scrolling here, I know. My my fingers actually hurt from scrolling so much. It's it's hilarious how how much stuff I have here. So uh, bless the five medium slots. I can slap three scrambles and have two more module slots to slap anything else that uh, I feel like the ship needs. Now the classic uh, build usually consists of three scrambles, which is going to be the same, which is going to be the same thing for this ship. Now it has only three gyros, uh, has only two gyro stabilizers or magnetic field stabilizers in this case because again five low slots. I could technically sacrifice the extender, but it will sacrifice tank, so not to really be something I I want to do. After all, it has a bonus on the extender, so I might as well use them. And you also have a bonus on tracking disruptors and the guidance disruptors, which can be very useful against specific targets. Can be both can you can use both at the same time you can also focus on the missile guidance disruptor or you can also focus on the tracking disruptor. Again, depends on the targets and this is something that you can change. Although the ship has a better bonus on guidance disruptors than it has on tracking disruptors, which is okay because after all this is a cavalry ship. And for a DPS build, of course, have to pull out the integrations because we are not going to be needing those anymore, at least for this, uh, at least for this video. And we are going to we are going to be slapping some DPS rigs now. How much DPS can you get out of a ship that has five high slots? By default, other ships might appear to have more DPS, and in a lot of in a lot of cases, in a lot of situations, I would say, yeah, more high slots should theoretically mean more DPS, after all you have more guns that shoot. Although this thing has a very nice bonus and it's, it is going to pull off a very good DPS output. Even with 5 turrets, my DPS is almost nearly identical to the DPS that I have on my Macarial. So, it is, you know, pretty decent. And uh, we also have implants which can be used. I'll be using, I'll be showing you the DPS with the high power call and with the thermal circulation, although for this ship the high power call, if you're using blasters, high power call is definitely the, the easier to use. The thermal circulation is more for tanking and we have 4.1 thousand DPS which equals the DPS on my Macarial, the cold DPS on my Macarial. So yeah, it does offer some decent DPS. Probably not going to be the highest because again, five high slots, but it is still going to offer some Talking pretty decent DPS accepted. that it's Oh, wait, why did my ship... Why did my ship dock? Oh, this game... Yeah, sometimes... Uh, did I actually click on dock? I didn't, I didn't even see that. Never mind, let's just undock again. So, despite the ship seeing kind of... the feels underwhelming when you look at it for the first time, but when you get to know the ship, when you actually start flying it, it does feel different. Uh, it does definitely feel different. Its role is definitely more of a support bait role than 
uh, being uh, actively used solo, but it still can be used the way you use any other ship, basically. It's not uh, limited to certain tasks, although it's definitely more suited to do some other tasks better than other ships. And let's quickly charge that high power call here and take a look at the stats of the tracking disruptors. Should be pretty nasty. 4.1 thousand DPS, 802,000 hit points with the damage control active, over 100,000 shield hit points. Yeah, it has some it has it, it has some chunk to it, that's for sure. I think it's almost the same tank, almost overall the same hit points as the all sync, which is kinda funny when you think about it. 6.1 thousand with the high power active, with one minus fuel seven point five thousand, and with the second one it's eight point nine thousand, which is okay. Not the highest, but also not the lowest. The overall total DPS output is okay. Can't really complain about the total DPS. After all, five thirds for five thirds, that's good. And of course, we have some drones that can help out a little bit, but this is definitely not a drone boat. So uh, that was the hypercool. Let me show you the thermal circulation just for fun. Now, as I mentioned, probably a thousand times before, the thermal circulation does give you more total DPS when the DPS kicks in but the duration of the thermal circulation is much, much, much shorter. Basically, I look at the thermal circulation implant as a shotgun, because it fires a couple shells and then you have a cooldown, which kind of equals a reload, although obviously it's not a reload, but it feels like it when you are using the implant. And during those maybe 30 seconds of uh, the implant's DPS mode active, you can unleash some devastating DPS. It should have about 25 to 30% higher total DPS than the high power coil. But again, the duration is much, much shorter. So I guess that's one balancing factor. In the end, I still use the thermal circulation implant primarily as a tanking implant because honestly, that's the best implant for that purpose and overall the cheapest implant for cheapest price to performance implant in the game. 7,016 DPS with the implant active. Pretty good. And now let's take a look at 8.5 thousand and with the second one 10,201 DPS. Significantly higher than the DPS with the high power coil, but the effect is, of course, much, much shorter. And lastly, I can l live with that without a problem. Uh, I've been using the thermal circulation implant for a while, and I honestly like it. It's a fantastic and a very multi-purpose implant that has a multi-purpose use. Now let's have some fun and let's slap some cannons, because remember this, this ship has a bonus on cannons, has a bonus on decomposers, has a bonus on lasers, has a bonus on everything, besides drones. So, again, you can fit any weapon system that uh, you have skills for, and the ship is basically good to go. Now, uh, with the auto cannons. You have the barrage implant and you have the new artillery cover. Both of which are fantastic implants. And honestly, I would say if you're looking for sustained DPS, then the artillery cover is the way to go. If you're using, if you want the ship to just delete stuff in seconds, and if you are flying in a fleet, the barrage can also be very useful. And if you're using this ship for low sec combat, the barrage is definitely going to give you better results. Not not against all the targets, of course, but against the vast majority of targets, the barrage will simply just kill much faster because you don't really need to have the sustained DPS for all targets. Against tanky targets, sustained is definitely better, but how many tanky ships are out there in low sec? 
yeah, not many, only very few, which if you know how to spot them, you will know when to change the implant and basically when to change the ship, since against tanky targets, you need to have a tanky ship. And we have 2.9 thousand DPS, let me go and enable the barrage implant. Surprisingly, or unsurprisingly, with cannons, you do have a bit less DPS. Because blasters are literally the, the like shotguns and they have the highest overall DPS but one of the shortest range and I have 3000 DPS so it's still the, the blasters have a bit more higher DPS than the odd cans but oh let me show you that DPS that DPS that was scaring people so much a couple months ago because you could see 50,000 DPS Macarials that um yeah when you think about what's kind of it was broken actually uh, well, still is uh, still is broken when I, when I if I ever to be honest, but that DPS isn't really being applied now because of how the sever ticks work. And let's take a look: eleven thousand eight hundred seventeen <laughs> DPS. Lol. All right then. Uh, with one gyro stabilizer, we have fourteen thousand four hundred eighty-eight point eighty-eight, and with the second one, we have uh, seventeen thousand twenty-three-two point forty-four DPS. On paper, this looks absolutely horrifying, but in actual practical use, it's not that scary, not that dangerous. It, it shoots fast, but it also loses that DPS so fast, it doesn't have much of an effect. In a fleet with a bunch of ships to barrage, yeah, it's it's scary, but when, when solo, yeah, it's not that dangerous. Well, it is dangerous, but you know, the sustained DPS of the artillery cover is more lethal in the longer run with less dps kind of funny now this would be a pve high sec only build it can push some decent dps you can use any weapon system that you want missiles blasters railguns lasers it depends on what you have so the overall general idea is basically the same and you can replicate the same builds on all different weapon platforms. With the exception of drones, because you will definitely not be treating this as a drone boat. It would be hilarious if someone takes what I said out of context and if they built a drone boat. Well, I don't know how they would do that, but if someone builds a drone boat widow and then they complain how the build sucks because they try to replicate this with a drone Warp build and then they get torn to shreds. I can I can definitely see it happening. Players taking stuff out of context and then I mean some some folks just do everything they can just to discredit you just because they're salty and just because you did stuff that they can't replicate because again they're there too salty. But that's just not a topic for this video. It's uh something that's been happening quite recently. I find it that I find it quite hilarious. Anyway. How is this thing performing with missiles? Well, I mean, it is good. In some cases, 3.3 thousand DPS with the damage mode active and the maximum possible DPS with rapid missiles. 5,049.45. With torpedo launchers, it's probably going to be higher and it's going to have some good DPS with the normal cruise missiles. But I feel like rapids might be the sweet spot when it comes to PvE. If you like to use missiles for PvE, then the rapids are definitely kind of in the middle. Good application, good overall DPS, good speed, good range. So overall, it will be no, not as high, not the highest DPS. The torpedoes have more DPS, that's for sure. With the torpedoes, I would have like, I think eight, nine thousand DPS, but. The torpedoes might not apply the damage very well to smaller targets. The rapid missiles apply the damage nicely to basically everything, so that's the reason why I have them equipped. For PvP, if you're using missiles, well, I mean, the rapid missiles might actually be the way to go if you like to. I mean, it's going to probably the, it's probably going to be the better option against smaller targets, since the large turrets can have problems tracking smaller, faster ships. I guess you can technically build the ship for specific targets if you plan to engage smaller targets. Then using small, medium turrets is 
definitely you know the the choice because the smaller turrets are going to have better tracking they still have lower dps but for against smaller targets you don't really need to have all the you, you don't really need to have all the dps because you are in a battleship and they're in a cruiser or frigate they in most cases will not be able to do much to your tank so any DPS that you might have in the end is going to be more than enough to blow up their cruiser or frigate. If your goal is to shoot battleships, then definitely the large turrets, missiles, torpedoes is the way to go. So overall, you can build this ship for various different purposes. It's very, it's very similar to the Scorpion. And it's kind of sad that the Scorpion isn't being used much. In some instances, I've seen players say that the Scorpion is the worst battleship in the game, which I, I believe isn't really, f really fair towards the ship because the Scorpion has a very interesting purpose, and it's one of the most unique ships in the game. I don't, I didn't fly one because I usually fly different ships. The Scorpion, not not this Scorpion. This is, this is the Widow. When I say Scorpion, I mean the other Scorpions. This when I when I say Widow or Black Ops, then I'm referring to this thing. But the Scorpion has different, uh, definitely different purpose. It's a support bait ship. Same can be actually said about this ship as well. It can fulfill the same, uh, the same roles. Although uh, this this uh, Black Ops is a bit different when I see different it is obviously more expensive obviously it has some things that it does better than the previous scorpions so it is definitely different but that doesn't really make the other scorpions bad they're still very good ships with a very interesting role purpose and overall those ships in the right hands can be ridiculously fun. Now the reason why I'm not flying them uh, is because I already have battleships that I fly and uh, those ships already do the job that I need really well. Doesn't mean that they can do the same thing that the Scorpion does, but at the moment I don't really have the need to get a Scorpion. Because again, uh, I just use other ships don't really have a need to to use these things because their role is kind of different from what I do. Doesn't mean that it's a bad ship, it's a good ship, just with a specific role, at least when I'm looking at the ship in in this way. It can do the same thing my other ships can do, obviously, but I don't need to replace if it's not broken, you don't need to fix it, or replace it, or, you know, something along those lines. And, as you can see, it does clear fairly quickly. This is a 6 million isk mission, and it does really well. I mean, I'm pretty happy with the damage application, pretty happy with the overall total DPS, and pretty happy with this ship's overall performance. Definitely can fulfill the PvE high sec role as well quite efficiently. The capacitor is really good on this thing. I would say better capacitor than what we have seen on the Panther and on the Sin. So that's uh, one thing that is working really well on this Black Ops that's not really that good on the previous ones. And we will have to see how the Red Mirror, well, how the Armageddon Special Ops will perform. But that will be it for the for the Scorpion Special Ops or for the Widow. A very unique ship, honestly, a very unique ship, skill-wise, very unique ship uh, with its role and overall, it is one of the more interesting Black Ops ships in the game at the moment. We will see what they will Docking do to accepted. their skills. I expect the skills to be changed. I expect the overall bonuses to be to be changed. I expect to see buffs happening uh, in order for these ships to fulfill the role in a uh, in a more let's say not exactly a better way, but to make it easier 
for the ship to actually fulfill its purpose. So with that being said, I hope you guys enjoyed. If you would like to support me, feel free to like and subscribe. And with that being said, stay safe, fly safe, and as always, I'll see you next time.